How's it going you lovely bunch of people? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to make pepper cookies, a Baltic Christmas classic. So let's go to the kitchen and check it out. This is not gingerbread. In fact, there's no ginger in this recipe. Pepper cookies, as the name suggests, contain pepper, and that is ground black pepper. Of course, there are other spices in this recipe, like cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, and coriander. The pepper is there for spice, but they are not just spicy. They are super fragrant and tasty. I used to love eating pepper cookies around Christmas when I was little. Now it's time to make my own. And after watching this video, you'll be able to make them too. So let's get right to it and see what we need. We'll use some white bread flour, butter, soft brown sugar, honey, baking soda, and egg. These will form the base of our dough. Now let's move on to the spices. We have cloves, coriander, cardamom, black pepper, and cinnamon. I will also show you how to make the icing for decoration, and for that, We'll need egg white and icing sugar. And that's about it for the ingredients. Let's move on to the equipment. We'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, a pot, a large bowl, scales, a rolling pin, a whisk, a spatula, a cookie cutter. You can use any shape that you like. And finally, we'll need a piping bag for the icing. Now a little nozzle like this can be quite handy. It makes the piping job easier and more consistent, but you can definitely do it without it. The piping bag alone works well enough. Alright, let's start making our dough. First things first, we need to grind the spices. You can use ground spices for this if you want, but grinding your own just amps up the flavor. Freshly ground cardamom is just so intense. And here's how I like to do it. I place the cardamom pods in the mortar and I bash them with a the pestle. Once they're all cracked open, I remove the shells. We can add the cloves to this at the same time, then grind it all together. Once it's all ground down, add the other spices into the mix too. This will just ensure that everything's nicely combined. Now you can adjust the spices and the ratios to your taste. The cardamom in this recipe is definitely the dominant flavor. And if you're not into that, you can just reduce it. And if you want to call this gingerbread, why not add some ginger too? It's your cookie, you make it how you like it. I'm just here to show you the methods. Okay, that's the spice mix done. We can continue by making the dough. First things first, combine the flour with the baking soda. Mix it well so it's evenly dispersed and leave it on the side. Next up, grab your pan and a sieve. Even though I thought I ground the spices down quite well, it's always good to double check. And as you can see, the mix was still quite chunky. Now I could grind these bits down again and add them back, but it wasn't a lot, so I just left them out. To the spices, add the soft brown sugar, the butter and honey. Bring this over to the stove and let it all melt down on medium heat. Keep heating it until the sugar is completely melted. Some adjustments that you can do here is use syrup instead of honey and white sugar instead of brown sugar. The sugar should melt in about 3-4 to four minutes. Once it's ready, pour it into your mixing bowl and leave it to cool down for around 10 minutes. After cooling down, we can add the egg and mix it through. If you don't let your mix cool down, you'll end up with scrambled eggs. The egg is extremely important in this recipe. It makes these cookies keep their shape. And I'm not sure if there are any replacements for it. Maybe if someone knows, let us know down in the comments section. Okay, follow the egg with the flour and baking soda mix. Now using your scraper, mix the dough until there's no more dry flour left. Take note of the texture. It is soft and runny, and that's exactly how it should be. So don't think there's something wrong with your dough when you're mixing it. Whilst it's warm, it will have this texture. We will make it set by cooling it down in the fridge. I would suggest dividing it into two batches. It'll make it easier to work with. Wrap them up in cling film and refrigerate for at least two hours. You want the dough to be completely set and hard. And if it's still warm, it is not going to have that texture. If you wanted to, you could make this dough several days ahead of time. Just keep it in the fridge until you need it. But once you are ready to make some cookies, take it out, dust it generously with flour and roll it out using your rolling pin. The thickness is totally up to you. You want your cookie to be slightly chewier and softer? Make it thicker. If you want it to be crunchier, make it thinner. Again, it's your cookie, you make it how you like it. You can even do half and half. Make some of them thicker, some of them thinner, and then decide which ones you like best. When it comes to cutting them out, be as efficient as you can. Cut the cookies as close to each other as possible. This dough is extremely easy to work with. It's not sticky, it's not fragile. What I'm saying is you don't have to baby it. Once you have cut out the whole sheet of dough, Simply push it all back together, roll it out again, and keep cutting until you run out of dough. This can be re-rolled several times with no problems. Just keep going until there's no more dough left, and then repeat with the other piece. You could bake these cookies straight after cutting. They will keep their shape. 
but I decided to refrigerate them and bake them later. And to save space, I stacked them all up into one tray. As you can see, there are three layers of cookies here. This will be a great way for fitting these into your baking schedule, because you can just wrap them up and leave them in the fridge for a couple days even. Okay, let's make the icing real quick. Add the egg white into a large bowl, grab your whisk, and beat it until it's nice and frothy. I think this would be called the soft peak stage. When it's nice and fluffy, but it doesn't quite keep its shape. Next up, add half the icing sugar. Whisk it up until it's all nice and smooth, and then add the rest. You want the final mix to be quite thick. And if for some reason it isn't, simply add more icing sugar. Do it in about 20 gram increments, and that's 0.7 ounces. For reference, this is exactly how your icing should look. It is not extremely stiff, but it is thick and it holds its shape. Now we can transfer this to the piping bag. Get a deep cup or a jug, and if you are using a nozzle, twist the piping bag up and stick it inside the nozzle so that the icing doesn't come out. Now place the piping bag in the cup, pour the icing into it, tie it up, and now it's ready to be used. This icing dries out and sets quite easily, so don't expose it to the air. Only squeeze it out when you go to use it, because it may just set inside the nozzle, and then you won't be able to press it out anymore. If you are using it and decorating your cookies, and you have to stop for some reason, stick something inside the nozzle. That should prevent the icing from setting. Right, it's baking time, and I'll do this one by one, because my oven's quite small. I'm baking them on the middle rack, at 200 degrees Celsius fan off, and that's 392 Fahrenheit. 7 minutes is more than enough. The darker they are, the more bitter they will taste. This is the color you want your cookies to be. I baked the first batch for 9 minutes, so that's 2 minutes longer, and you can see a few cookies are a bit darker than others. Now they are still good of course, but they are slightly more crispy around the edges, and they do have a slight bitterness to them. It might be to your taste, it might not. And you can of course play around with the baking times, see what works best for you. But let's have a closer look at our pepper cookie. It is so simple yet beautiful. The dough is so easy to make and extremely easy to work with. The result will totally surprise you. When you take your first bite, you will never look at gingerbread the same way again. I appreciate that a lot of people love ginger in their baking, but it's definitely not for me. And of course I'm biased, because I grew up eating these things. Right, finally, quick note on the egg whites. If you are worried about salmonella, then just use pasteurized egg whites. British eggs should not have salmonella. So I'm not worried about using raw eggs for my icing. But if you are a bit more vulnerable or pregnant, then of course it's better to be safe than sorry. Any large supermarket should stock pasteurized egg whites. Right, I think it's time you go and make your pepper cookies. These guys are looking forward to meeting you. So what do you think this recipe? Have you ever tried something like this before? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.